Hey, what's going on, people? This is V85. Um, back from the dead, apparently. So, um, if you can't tell my voice, I'm still kind of sick. Um, I'm just now getting over the flu, and it sucks. So, I've been working on top of that and all that. So, that's why I've been off the radar um, for like the last couple weeks or something like that. Um, the. Uh, I'm going to talk about two things right now. I'm going to talk about uh, regionals, uh, which was actually last weekend, so the 6th of December, I think the 6th. I can't remember which which day. Um, I didn't do good at all. Um, that's when I started feeling sick and you know having two uh, hours of rest before then because um, um, arrangements to stay at other people's houses didn't fall through and... Um, not eating and all, you know, you know, you know the wall that you hit when you're not in good uh, standing and everything. So, um, so it didn't do very well. I did play macro watts. Um, it the deck did what I think it was supposed to do. Um, like I said, I just hit that tired wall very early and just started um, misplaying like it was my absolute job. So um, it was just a bad day. OJ, yeah. Product placement. Um, but the good part of this, that regional, was, you know, I went there with not necessarily my intention to play. I wanted to get rid of a lot of stuff. Because I have a lot of stuff in my binder that was just taking up space and I wanted to get rid of. Um, especially a lot of prophecy stuff. And I uh, found a lot of people that wanted prophecy stuff. And. Um, it was a deck that, you know, I, I toyed with, um, just because I pulled everything out of it, and, um, I really didn't like it, so I just wanted to get rid of it, and ended up picking up the stuff that I really, really wanted to play in the first place instead of Prophecies, which was Gearsia. So I picked up pretty much everything for Gearsia at the regional, so, um, I didn't leave there empty-handed, so that's what we're going to talk about today is Gearsia, and my... My build for it, which is Gearsia Karakuri. It's it's not typical Gearsia Karakuri. Um, I modified it to the way that I like to play it and everything. And if you go back into like the the V eighty five archives and everything, like the first deck that I even started talking about, and this was Karakuri. You know, it's really what started me in uh, playing competitively and everything. So. Um, uh, it, it actually feels really good to get back to the root deck that um, I started playing with and um, it brings back a lot of nostalgia and you know bringing those um, that knowledge of what characters do and what they're strong at what they're weak against and applying it to Gearsia character it's actually really really fun so I'm having a lot of fun with this deck and um, it, it's it's doing really really well. I love the way the deck plays. It just puts so much damage on board in such a little amount of time. And if you if you know what the deck does, then you know it's it's not a surprise that that's that's just a strength that character does. It just puts so much damage on board. And um, I um, I'm still toying around with the uh, Gearsia Machina. Uh, build uh, I don't like it as much because um, if I'm gonna play this I want to I want to grind game it and then I want to just pretty much OTK after I get done grinding so um, yeah so without further ado let's swap you down here and show you my crotch <laughs> and uh, show you what we've got so so as we can get the, the camera stable there we go. Okay, let's move spells and traps out of the way. So let's talk about some of the monsters really, really quick. So first of all, um, you have the Gearsia engine, which are three armors, uh, three arsenals, and three accelerators. We'll move these up a little bit more so she can seize them. So um, this is pretty much, you know. Uh, but since it's Gearsia, it is the engine of the deck. Uh, we we know how broken Arsenal is with 
being able to uh, get your armors really, really quick. Accelerator with pretty much being a keys on. And armor pretty much adding all of these guys to your hand as well. Um, I'm also teching uh, two Girgiano Mark II's. Um, this thing is actually really, really good. It gets you into really good pinches um, if you need your arsenal back to uh, fetch an armor out of your deck or just um, summon it and special an armor so that you can just set it. It also helps around with your synchro capabilities since you play the Karakuri synchro engine. So uh, it makes you, um, it allows you to go into your Bray place pretty easily if you summon a Bolt Watchdog on top of it. Um, same thing with if you uh, summon a Strategist, you can go into Barkeon, or if you summon, um, actually I'm taking a Karakuri Barrel into this as well. It's a pretty good little Spirit Reaper tuner, but you can go into Beast place with it as well. And I've done that quite a few times, and it just shut. B still shuts decks down, which is really, really good right now. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've won with um, Naturia Beast simply because I had a you know a Tech Mark II on field and can make barrel. So, so that's the Gearsia engine. Get those out of the way. Uh, two Watchdog, one Strategist, one Quick and one barrel like I said this is the Karakuri engine uh, we know how aggressive these guys get when you um, when you really start playing with them and the thing is you can do some really really great field manipulation with these guys as well especially with watchdog because a lot of people still really forget that watchdog when it's in attack mode it still doesn't die and it keeps on getting bigger and bigger the more your opponent attacks into it so Let's say I have it in defense mode, and my opponent attacks in some. Let's say they attack it with Stratos or something like that. So it, it'll go into attack mode. I'll take the 12, and then, you know, they attempt to attack into it with something, you know, slightly bigger. And this guy will be a 26 defense, so it'll go back into defense mode. And they'll have to uh, deal with, you know, whatever differences after that 26 defense but they still don't realize that watchdog doesn't die if it goes into attack position so that's the way it goes like if watchdog's in defense you attack into it sure i'm going to take damage but all my characters are going to get bigger and this guy is still on the field so it's it's a it's a pretty good wall if you know how to play with watchdog and it's the same thing with uh, with Strategist. Uh, you can do some pretty good film manipulation with it. Character of Barrel, a lot of people don't know what this thing does. Uh, once per turn, it can't be destroyed by battle. And being a level 2 Earth Tuner, uh, like I said, you can make your Nature Beast plays with it and shit like that. Um, quick, quick is just icing on the cake uh, with the deck because um, of its... Ability if it destroys a monster by battle you can special summon a character from your graveyard So nine times out of ten if you have quick on board you have one of these four in the graveyard So you can just run over a monster then special summon one of these guys and make a sink or play um, Main phase two so it's really really easy to uh, After you've made your character spam play you just um, summon a quick attack get your watchdog and then main phase two make your stardust and pretty much lock your opponent down to where they can't destroy your field. Um, some of the other techs. Uh, I'm playing two Cyber Dragon. Um, I don't know if I'm going to keep these in here or not. I'm actually thinking about putting in D prisons instead of these because I really do love D prisons. However, in my local meta, a lot of people love playing Thunder Kings. So, um, and you know, Cyber Dragon. It, it just shits all over Thunder King, and Thunder King honestly is a big problem with this deck with all the search power for the uh, Gearsia engine and all that kind of shit. So, um, you need a inherent answer for Thunder King, so that's pretty much where Cyber Dragon comes into play. Um, I'm really not too afraid of people playing Chimera Tech on me because honestly, a lot of people stop playing Chimera Tech and Extra Deck because there's so little room in Extra Deck. For Khmer Tech Fortress, and a lot of people aren't even siding it anyway, so um, I'm kind of not afraid of it. So, um, Tech One Gores as well, and One Sangin just to get that extra search. So, you can search for any of your character tuners, you can search for uh, armor, you can search for uh, accelerator if you really need one. So, that's the end of the monster lineup. I think it's like um, 16, 18 monsters, somewhere around there. It's pretty balanced.
So, on to spells. Uh, triple MST. This deck absolutely hates back row. It hates it. The sooner you can get your opponent's back row out of the way and start attacking, uh, like to make your OTK play, then the better. So um, I'm actually thinking about taking one MST out and taking the heavy out actually because I, I like playing back row as well. So I'm actually thinking about taking out one MST and um, the heavy and teching in two night beams. Not sure about that or not. I'm still toying with that idea. Um, all your one ofs, your Book of Moon, your Heavy Storm, Mind Control, it's amazing for Synchro and Xyz plays, um, Dark Hole, Pot of Avarice, Limiter, uh, it's, it's, it's a win more, but it can get you out of some really, really uh, bad positions, especially if you're playing something like Dark World, where they just have a huge beater on board, and if you have something like a Quick that you can uh, summon to the board, they have no response, you attack into their guy, and damage step they have no response you limiter then you can get your character tuner and then start synchroing off main phase two so uh... limiter is actually really really damn good um, you can apply it in many many different ways with this deck and of course uh... one monster reborn on to traps really really quick uh... solemn judgment double warning one starlight road uh, you know this is just in case like you get your you get your synchro playoff or your synchro spam and you know they have the dark hole and blam you know uh, Starlight Road always gets people off guard so it's always really really fun uh, two compulse two fiendish chain and two bottomless that ends out the trap lineup so um, I'm not going to show side deck I'm still working on that and everything but it's pretty standard uh, extra deck uh, one catastrophe one beast like I said you can still go into beast it, it's harder to go into with this than like uh, traditional characters um, because you don't play uh, merchant and Anishi because like if you have the Anishi merchant play you just make turn one beast and it really hurts your opponent like if, especially if they're playing something that is to the hilt um, has to play spells like chaos dragons or dark worlds or something like that um, but those decks are becoming less prominent and everything, so Beast necessarily isn't as much of um, a, a big, you know, turn one kill card. But it's still really good, like mid game when your opponent is starting to get low on stuff and they really need to draw those top deck Monster Reborns or Dark Holes or Pot of Dualities or something like that. Uh, one Barkeon. Uh, still, I mean, it's still really easy to go into with uh, Strategist and uh, Gearshiana Mark II. Uh, make barrel and plus any of your level four gear I mean that's one that's one of the reasons I really love gear character is because their uh, their synergy with each other is just so great. I mean it's it's absolutely amazing. I'm really glad that uh, they made them uh, Earth Machines because it just makes everything play out so perfectly. Uh, one Black Rose, two Berets, and two Beretos. Um. These guys are pretty much like, you know, they're the heart and soul, just get everything on the board and just start spamming the shit out of your opponent. You know, these guys are absolute powerhouses, and they're still like some of the biggest synchros in the game um, as far as just pure power. Like, Beret is um, being able to pretty much, this thing pretty much can take down anything in the entire game, like aside from something that is just absolutely just massive like Quasars. Or something like that but this thing it it just takes down so much shit and um, both these like Bredo just being added pluses and all that kind of stuff with character switching positions it, it just goes insane uh, one Stardust Dragon and one Scrap Dragon to end out the synchro lineup and then for the Xyz um, I'm not playing nearly as much as I should be but because of limited extra deck space it just sucks so you have to pick and choose what synchros what exceeds you want to play so uh, I'm only playing one gear gun X um, mainly because it's the only one I can get a hold of but playing one gear gun X really isn't that bad um, there's I really don't see a need for two to be really honest um, if I lose the first gear gun X I can just wait for my average to come up so I can just recycle it and recycle my armors and accelerators 
and um, then make it afterward. But you know, one one X is pretty good unto itself. You know, <coughs> excuse me. You know, if it did anything better other than um, add a monster to your hand and then special summon a gear uh, uh, gear gun of Mark II from your graveyard when it's destroyed, then um, I would consider playing more than this, but, you know, it's all that you really need. Uh, one Roach, because I hate agents and Chaos Dragons and shit like that, so uh, Roach gets those out of the way. Oh, Heretics, too. I hate those, too. Uh, one Abyss Dweller. Um, I'm, I'm finding out how great this card is. This card is just absolutely amazing. Um... I can't tell you how many times, like, especially in the Dark World matchups, I'll just drop a fi Abyss Dweller out of, um, you know, instead of going Gear Gun X or something like that. If I already have the play, like, if I already have the, um, the Strategist play, and I don't need the Gear Gun X to, to search for Strategist, I'll just drop Abyss Dweller and start with my other plays and, you know, just drop him in the game of my opponent's graveyard and all that kind of shit, and then start going from there because you really don't care about your graveyard. Uh, one Shockmaster because you can make it really, really damn easily with armors and accelerators. And uh, one Fairy King, uh, Alberdict. The reason I'm playing this guy is because I like playing Goes and Match in my extra deck. And, <coughs> excuse me, if you really look at it, when you start going to Xyz plays, these are your best, well, these are your only two Xyz options that you can do because you're going to be stuck in Earth type. And pretty much like every monster in the entire deck. <coughs> Sorry, I'm coughing so much. <coughs> pretty much your entire deck is Earth type. Aside from Cyber Dragons, your Gores, and your Sangin. So it's really, really easy to go into this. Plus, Alverdick just gets over a lot of stuff right now. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Damn. So. Uh, that's pretty much the end of the deck profile. This is what I'm going to be playing for quite a while now. I'm giving up on Watts for right now. I might bring him back pretty soon, but I'm really, really loving this deck. So, comment down below. Tell me what you think about the text. And um, if you want to hit me up on DN, go right ahead. My um, username will be right down there in the description bar. And I'll talk to you guys later. This is V85. Over and out.